for Ravens fans, there are some former Ravens players that whenever you hear their name, it just makes you smile. Uh, Ray Lewis is obviously one of them. Ed Reed is obviously another one. Uh, and there are plenty more, too. But Jacoby Jones, he is certainly uh, on that list. Jacoby Jones gets nothing but love uh, from Baltimore fans. Uh, and it's evident every time he shows up to the stadium to make a guest appearance, anytime he's on somebody's podcast, you love listening to him. Jacoby Jones, like I said, got nothing but love uh, from Ravens fans. And obviously, uh, we all remember his impact uh, that Super Bowl year because it was a huge uh, impact in a positive way. Um, some people even feel like he should have got Super Bowl MVP. Uh, but anyway, Jacoby Jones. He was on Glenn Clark Radio. Shout out to Glenn Clark, by the way. We appreciate you sharing this interview uh, with the world um, because it, it was a gem of an interview. Now, uh, I will have the link to the interview down below in the description so you can listen to it for yourself. But remember, Jacoby Jones is not Team Keep It Clean. We love Jacoby Jones, but he is not Team Keep It Clean. So there are going to be times where he's letting some stuff fly. So I just got to forewarn you. But anyway, there was a quote. Uh, from this interview that had been going crazy on Ravens Twitter. Everybody had been talking about it like, hey, hey, did you see that? You see what Jacoby Jones said about Lamar Jackson and them Ravens offense? Well, let, let's read the quote. The quote uh, from Glenn Clark Radio. He said, Jacoby Jones on Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. So Jacoby said, if Lamar had me, himself, Jacoby Jones, and Quan and Tory, he wouldn't be running anywhere. So that went crazy. But for me, when it comes to quotes, the best way to really decipher and break down and analyze a quote is not even just to analyze the quote itself, but to analyze everything around it. Context is extremely important. So in order to get the best context, I had to listen to the entire interview. Uh, and it went by fast because, like I said, it was a really good interview. Uh, Glenn Clark, it was just a fun conversation between Glenn Clark and Jacoby Jones. Um, but that part, that specific part right there uh, where Jacoby Jones brought that up, because um, Glenn Clark asked him, he had asked Jacoby Jones uh, if he gets a chance to watch Ravens games. And Jacoby Jones talked about how he, he watches them when he can. Um, but a lot, there's a lot of times where he'll, he'll be in meetings and stuff. Uh, and it was after that that he brought it up. That he brought up that, hey, if, if Lamar had me and Quan Torrey, he wouldn't be running around like that. Now, there was some different pieces from this interview that stood out to me when he spoke of Anquan and Tory and himself. Uh, see, th and, and this was the part, several parts. There was one part of the interview where Jacoby Jones, he talked about how um, you had Anquan, Tory, himself, Ray Rice and Leach in the backfield. He said Pitta ran routes like a wide receiver. And he said, think about it. Who are you going to guard? Then he said, kick it to me, referring to himself as a returner. Uh, and, and he was just highlighting that the Ravens had sp so many special players on offense that made a big difference and made a very huge positive impact. And again, when he, when he said, who are you going to guard? Oh, I, I, I appreciated that a lot. I really did. Because y'all know how I feel. Been saying it for years. But it's just he highlighted the importance of having just high quality on offense and what it does for the other players on who are you going to guard and what it does to a defense. It makes your offense's life easier. It makes the opposing defense's life harder. And then uh, he also talked about um, after he brought up the whole, if Lamar would have had him, Anquan and Torrey, um, Glenn, Glenn Clark brought up Justin Jefferson, uh, and he talked about how Justin Jefferson should be in the running for MVP, uh, but he also mentioned that it's infuriating to him. Glenn Clark said this. I was like, okay, now, Glenn, I see you, baby. He said it's infuriating to him how people try to devalue wide receivers. I said, oh, Glenn, all right there, buddy. I like it. Uh, and he said, uh, we have an ungodly amount of evidence that you're going to be much better when you have wide receivers to throw it to. And Jacoby Jones said, when you have someone where you can just throw it in the air and they're going to go get it, it's different. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So we, I mean, we didn't really, for this quote that went crazy, we honestly really didn't need much context because the quote, I mean, it said everything. But then when we did, when we saw the context, it just backed it up that much more. 
Um, so that was nice to hear. It was very refreshing to hear. Uh, I mean, from a wide receiver himself and somebody who's not just a wide receiver. He was also uh, a return man. So y'all make sure you listen to the interview uh, when you get a chance to. Some other things that he mentioned uh, in the interview, he was talking about the reunion. Glenn Clark was like, hey, this is the 10 year reunion uh, from the Ravens Super Bowl. Um, Jacoby talked about how somebody just grabbed him and, and he didn't know who it was. And he said it, it was Ray Lewis. And he said Ray Lewis always just coming out of nowhere sometimes. Um, now, interesting story. That was funny. I appreciate it. He said during the Chargers game, uh, after Ray Rice got his fourth and 29, Jacoby said he asked Ray Lewis, uh, when the last time the Ravens won the Super Bowl? And Ray Lewis told him it was 12 years ago. And Jacoby was like, hey, I, I'm, I'm wearing a number 12. So this, this must mean something. Uh, and, and Ray told him, he, he said that Ray Lewis told him, don't worry about no Pro Bowl because he ain't going to be playing in that this year. And I was like, oh, well, I guess that, that, that ended up being correct. Um, when Jacoby Jones first came to the Ravens, Glenn, Glenn brought up how um, Jacoby Jones had that rep of not being uh, shorthanded. And that was true because, remember, I think that's one of the biggest reasons that the Texans let him go. Because in the playoff game the previous year when the Ravens had played the Texans, um, Jacoby Jones helped the Ravens win that game. He really did. Because he was dropping, uh, he, he, had, he had dropped uh, a couple of punts. So he was, he was fumbling those punts, and it was like, oh, man, he, he was helping the Ravens out. Then I think, what, what was it, Ed Reed that sealed the deal with a pick six? Did he get a pick six, or did he just get a pick in that game? I think he actually got two picks in that game. I don't remember for sure. But anyway, Jacoby Jones, he helped the Ravens win that game. So he had that rep. But Jacoby Jones said that uh, when he got to Baltimore, he got his own jug machine to work on that. Um, he also said, uh, do you know who my QB was with the Texans? And Glenn Clark, respectfully, uh, moved on because he said he, he wasn't trying to trash nobody which I appreciate it so good journalism right there by Glenn Clark um, Jacoby talked about how Flacco dislocated uh, his fingers twice in practice so you know Flacco with that with that ball Flacco don't play man and he said Tyrod has some zip too so if you practicing with Flacco and Tyrod and they both putting that heat on that ball Ooh, you you better wear gloves or something um he also, uh, Glenn, Glenn Clark asked him about when it got a little rough for them in December, uh, that Super Bowl year, uh, when the team was struggling a bit. But Jacoby Jones brought up how there were just so many leaders uh, that they had on the team. Uh, and he said when the playoffs hit that Ray Lewis came out with a Super Bowl trophy just to show them uh, what it looked like, just to give them that extra motivation. And again, it just gave you a nice reminder that um, leadership is a, uh, a huge quality. Um, not just in football, but just in life, but certainly uh, on a team. In any, any team that you're on, whether it be a football team, a basketball team, whether it be a team at work with a bunch of your uh, other employees, it's important that you have good leadership because good leadership can literally change everything. Um, Jacoby talked about how they faced Luck, Manning, Brady, and Kaepernick, said their offense and defense, they were flawless. And he said the special teams were special, so you couldn't tell us nothing. So they had that confidence, man. And I remember that year. I remember saying that um, they, faced the, they faced the future of the NFL. Uh, <laughs> who knew Andrew Luck wouldn't be the future for that much longer? But they faced the future of the NFL, and they faced the past, too. And they faced the current as well. They faced what, what was hot currently. Um, that being uh, Colin Kaepernick. So, um, yeah, man, that, that season was just crazy for what they went through and who they went against. Uh, he said that their squad was just so different that year. And he said they curse each other out, yell at each other, and then practice and eat together like nothing happened. Now, that takes some real love right there, man. That, that really takes to, to, for somebody, for you to be able to have some hard conversations with somebody and then turn around, work together. And eat together, break bread together. It's like that. That's a beautiful thing when you can do that. And, and it takes a special type of person and a special type of friendship to be able to do something like that. Now, you ain't going to be doing that every day because it could be a little toxic if you're doing that every day. But once in a while, yeah, if you got to have them conversations like that, then yeah. Um, he also talked about how Hobbs taught him to be a player's coach. Uh, and he said that his coaching style um, at Alabama State uh, is actually... Uh, he said he coaches like Hobbs. Um, Jacoby also brought up how you don't have to go to these top five power schools. I mean, these power five schools. And he said that if you show up and you have talent, then the scouts, they'll end up finding you. 
Um, and, and then he brought up how uh, <laughs> he said he said sometimes he'll catch his players watching some of his highlights, and so he said sometimes he'll be he'll be telling them like, no, a hey, on kickoffs, just keep it in the end zone. Don't come out the end zone. We'll get it at the twenty five, and we'll be straight. But he said his players they be coming out of the end zone, uh, and he said they they learned it from him. A lot of them learned it from him because they watch what he did, uh, and he can't even really get mad at him for that. Um, so this is a really nice interview. Uh, there's a lot more in there, uh, so make sure, again, you listen to it for yourself. The link to it will be in the description. Shout out to Jacoby Jones, and also shout out to Glenn Clark Radio uh, for putting everybody on to, um, and not even putting everybody on to Jacoby Jones, but allowing us to hear uh, this interview. It's always nice to um, sort of get a background to what was going on uh, that the last time the Ravens won a Super Bowl. It's always nice to hear these uh, these backstories and whatnot. Uh, especially from somebody as impactful uh, on that run and on that team uh, as Jacoby Jones was. So, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.